You guys have balls. Oh, yeah, baby. John Lyle, L.A. Lloyd, and Drew Bennett, Beaver Kool-Aid. So, first of all, I want to start off with, I didn't change the intro. Um, you know, <laughs> it was... <Yeah. laughs> Just didn't, didn't have, have time. time, man. I just didn't. You know, I know that sounds lame, but um, John, you you mad at me because I didn't change it? No, that's fine. I'm just glad that you talked immediately uh, after the intro. So you were adjacent to the intro. So in this way, uh, you're taking ownership of the intro. Right. And that's all right. That's the first step in healing, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So thank you for not That's being right, mad, boy. gentlemen and uh, i i promise i'm going to work on something better but i got uh, you know i got snowed in today i got iced in i uh, computer froze up i couldn't do anything it was just everything shut down in austin and san antonio i got you lloyd it's okay but don't say something better just say something different <laughs> then we'll figure out if it's better or not <laughs> okay. so we don't want to we don't drew and i don't want to kind of conference on our own and say he thinks that's better <laughs> it's going to change our opinion of your of you totally yeah but yeah things were shut down today it's amazing you know i i was looking out there today and i thought and i'd walk out for a little bit where because it was the the big uh, ice day and uh and i thought gee i wish i was in a crowd at a football stadium right now this is so delicious mm. it's so relaxing it's the way I want to be. Yeah, that's what I want to be. I want to be at some place watching football. You know, you gotta, you gotta think that those people are the best people to talk to when it comes to what should I wear to stay warm. Especially a Packers fan, or well, not oh, so yeah. much a Vikings fan anymore because they're indoors. But uh, yeah, you go to you go talk to a Packers fan how to stay warm. That's where you get the good advice from, right there for sure. Because they're going to know base layer brands and things to buy. Yeah. And the size of hot brats to stick in the pants. So it's the same mm-hmm. thing because that's what it yeah. is. If you can just yeah. you stick that yeah. in the right place, you can nurse that warmth for hours. Yeah. You on a first date, they're going to tell you what kind of brat to stick in your pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so does this mean that maybe uh, Aziz had, had a brat? And his mm-hmm. pants, and mm-hmm. that's what he was trying to offer mm-hmm. his his date because they mm-hmm. left the restaurant quickly, mm-hmm. and she was unable to consume her lobster roll. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't know about you guys, but if I've ever heard a better segue in my life than than John <laughs> Lyle's segue right there, that is the king of the segue for 2018 already. I don't think we can top <laughs> that one, man. Good God, that was a good segue. <laughs> wow. They said he was chasing her around the apartment and that she was, or she said, she said that he was chasing her around the apartment and he was doing things like, you know, putting his fingers in her mouth and everything. Well, it's the V fingers. It's two fingers. It's kind of yeah. like the, you know, I'm, I'm watching you, but instead he was like, I'm gagging you. I, I, yeah. uh, but let me ask yeah. you guys, have you ever, oh. ever once in your life from your teen years up to the present ever just said, Hey, first date gonna, you know, Stick the fingers down your mouth a little bit. How's that feel? Have you guys ever mm-hmm. done that ever? On a first date? Yeah, or any date. Uh, well, yeah, I went, but it wasn't a date. It was a <laughs> rendezvous. <laughs> I just have never had the inclination to go like, hey, you want to suck on, suck on this thumb here for a little bit? See how that tastes? You know why? Why? It's because you, it's because you don't watch a lot of porn. Well... You're right. And it's, and it, because that's a porn move. Oh, it is? The, what, the, yeah. the, 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 what, the mm-hmm. fingers in the mouth and the fingers mm-hmm. down below and the, cl- mm-hmm. the, as she described it, the claw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, my thing on this is just that, uh, I mean, my gosh, if everybody knew about uh, all the times that you were trying to hit on some chick somewhere, I mean, it could be embarrassing. It could be bad. Sometimes, you know, maybe you're fresh off a self-help book, feeling pretty confident. You know, it okay. was one of your goals. I think Aziz Ansari is a really funny guy. But do I think he's like a sexy guy? No. 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 I don't. He is funny, though. He's a funny, funny guy. And, oh and here's God. the thing. Let me tell you something. Funny guys with confidence can get just as many chicks as a very handsome, dapper guy, I've always said that. Yeah, but that. we're talking—we're talking—we're not talking about charisma and like getting into the bit. We're talking about 
we're talking about being in the bedroom. We're not talking about getting there. Yeah. We're talking about being there. there. Right. Right. And when you're there, you, you know, you're going to, you're, you're you, right. There's, there's just, there's nothing much you can do about being a little bit of you. Right. The nerd comes saying, out. I'm just saying that a little bit of what he, whatever he knew to do is what he did. And it was just an awkward you know, time because he learned it from bad, porn. He learned it from porn, just like you guys I just said. Think she had a bad time. Exactly. I just think she had a bad time because she ended up going out with a guy who was funny. And then once she got in bed, he was weird. I mean, that, you know, how many times does that happen? A hundred million times a day. Yeah, and a lot of times it's the other way around. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the other way around. The, the, the door shuts and then the the, the, the still music plays. Mm-hmm. And then you have to figure out a way to extricate yourself from that situation after you've gone far enough to make it worth your while. Uh, you did get out of bed in the morning. You're basically saying chew your arm off before you leave the next day because, you know, fatty's laying on your arm. Is that what you're saying? I do want to say that, that John, there was uh, a no, I don't sleep on my arm, Lloyd. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> no, I was about. saying the girl's sleeping. <laughs> oh, you said fatty. Well, okay, John. I was talking about the girl you're with. Listen, there's a reporter on CNN who got on today, a, a woman, and and called out this girl and, and said, uh, made some very good points that she, in her own statement, you know, put herself in, in, the, in there, put herself in a position with Aziz, you know, and said that she had remained there. And she said, look, if you're getting... Uh, sexually molested or whatever, then you need to go to the police. If you're getting sexually harassed at work, you need to speak up. But this kind of stuff, she said, sounded like a bad date. Yeah. And that you had a bad, you had a bad time and that you're putting this guy on front because you had a a bad time. Yeah. You had a bad time and he's known. Yeah. So, um, but that's why if if you just had the, the blow by blow, the play by play, (laughs) of maybe an encounter of in your past that didn't go well, they could maybe read the same, maybe even worse. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've had, some he whipped it out and then he hogged the whole thing. He didn't share it with me at all. <laughs> there I was. And I just didn't know. Do I applaud? Do I snap my fingers? What's the, what do I do? Yeah, like half of that broad is mine. <laughs> uh, come on. There's the broad. There it is. <laughs> I don't know. A Z man, look, you know, he's a funny guy. You're right. He's a funny dude, but you can't be funny. Dude. You can't be funny when you finally have to perform. Is that what you're saying in the bedroom? No, I'm just saying that a lot of things that I did that let's not hope that I think there's been some, once again, it's better just to turn everything off, but people wonder how this will attach itself to the me too movement. Actually, I was just, I don't even, I wasn't going to go there. I was going to, for the purpose of the length of the podcast, mm. I had, I was ready for a John Lyle segue right when you're in there. We were on the broad verse, right? The broad verse or the broad verse. <laughs> we were, we were on it kind of, sort of. <laughs> and then I was going to pull that and say, yeah, that's the kind of thing where that's, <laughs> that broad verse is escaping your body. And it's what? And and you realize that conventional plumbing is not as it, it, it cannot defeat it. See, here's that, the thing that what? that really that, amazes me that you know, we we shoot our ideas to you, John, and you just put it together like a like a puzzle. Like you you're yeah. an architect of podcasting, man. You just are the, the king of segues. <laughs> You see this thing there, and you know you're going to have to do battle with this thing that won't be flushed with your poop knife. Right. Wow. Wow, man. You are your pod casso. <laughs> this is what <laughs> Right after the holiday season where you have these, these, these arguments with a spouse or a boyfriend or girlfriend about how to decorate a tree and if it goes upside down or you put the garland on first and then the lights or this kind of thing. And then you find out people are raised differently. So it's the same thing when you find out that someone was raised in a family that utilized a the poop, poop knife. knife. Yeah, I, my my daughter and my wife uh, hit me up and said, hey, have you, you heard about the poop knife? I was like, no. And so I read the story. And look, if, if anyone on this podcast 
or anyone that's listening to this podcast should have had a poop knife in their home in Johnston County, North Carolina, it should have been in my house because we're the type of family that would have had a poop knife, but we didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know what a, what a poop knife was. Do you know what a poop knife is, Drew? Well, you watch, you guys watched a lot of Andy Griffith, so I could see how you could have a poop knife in your house, first of I, all. I'd never heard of it, but I, I guess it's some families have gargantuan turds that come out of their ass and it's so big. That's it usually where they come from. It won't. Thanks, John. It won't go down. And so you have to have a uh, piece of apparatus, a poop knife to, you know, chop it up. So it'll go down. Do battle with it. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I'd never do heard you have of this. to be, I don't mean to be rude here, but do you have to be of a certain weight to require a poop knife? I don't think so. I think it's just based on, um, you know, your, your genetics or maybe your, your lack of your lack of fiber. Well, See, I had to do some research on this when I found out that this was what Lloyd was going to bring up on the podcast. You, you notice that Lloyd frequently goes fecal on us. Mm -hmm. um, and so I thought, OK, it's what true. is this that's exactly? true? Because if it is this something that you immediately regift when you get the oh, lovely uh, poop knife. Yeah, well, that's what yeah. I was going to ask. Do they have like nice ones? Or do you, do you hear that sound from the bathroom and someone's stealing it in there and they're sharpening the poop knife? Well, what the hell's going on? You walk in, you're like, did you just use my poop knife? Well, uh, you know, according to this story was, you know, the guy went to his weed dealer and he's sitting down, hanging out with a group of people about to buy his pot, has to go take a shit, goes to the bathroom and, and yells at the dealer. He's like, hey, hey, man, can you come here? And he goes like, what? He's like, Where's your, where do you keep your poop knife? Hey, and the guy's like, knife? my what? He's like, your poop knife. And the guy started laughing. People hear him in the living room. Um, and so no one knew what, what the fuck he was talking about. And then, of course, he started making jokes about it and, and said, well, look, you know, my family, we grew up, we had one that hung in the laundry room. And he was like, well, why didn't you hang it like in the bathroom where it should be? Is like, because in the laundry room, it was between all of the bathrooms throughout the house. It was kind of centrally located that you could grab it on the way to the toilet, you know, to cut up your shit before you have to flush it. Because supposedly yeah. his family, there was just something about their, their whole uh, intestinal right. tract where they had large volume stools. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. they had to do battle with said stools. And he found out from uh, the incident at his pot dealer's house that not everyone... <laughs> grew up with a poop knife right. and not only that he found out he had a poop knife yeah. hanging at his house but his wife didn't know that was a poop knife she just assumed it was a hanging utility knife. right so she used it for not for not for food but for <laughs> opening packages or whatnot right she opened her amazon boxes with it so she'd been using the poop knife for that and so i saw that lloyd wanted to talk about that i i, I didn't really know how you get into that and so that was the reason why I used the the abrupt, crappy segue to that get was into brilliant. that. Because there's not a whole lot you can do at this point. Because all I see, Lloyd, I'd say, like, once again, he, he gave the wife an Instapot that she's not really keen on. And then I see him following that up with some kind of, oh, yeah. And, you know, new addition to our family, the poop knife. Here's exactly where you go. You go down to San Antonio, you go to the Alamo. Go into the gift shop there. I'm not kidding. Go into the gift shop. They have those letter openers that are in the shape of swords that were used at the Alamo, right? And that's a perfect poof knife. That is so sacrilegious to even say that about Texas, about our beloved Alamo. I'm not saying it about Texas. I'm just saying that that's a nice. You are comparing a sword knife. that is, you know. I'm not going there. I love Texas. I'm a John. Help me out here, man. He's, 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 I'm just saying you could go to the Alamo and get a good poop knife because they <laughs> I was just letter. thinking about a big ass frosting knife. <laughs> no, yuck. You don't want to. And besides the big frosting knife is going to get poop all over it and it's well, going to get stuck idea. in there. It's going to get stuck in there at the bottom. You want something like a sword, like a letter opener, and you can find them at the Alamo. That's all I'm saying. Good God, did you die in there? Uh, hey, hang on. I'm creating. <laughs> but honestly, I mean, I don't want to carry this on forever because it seems like it probably is to somebody listening. But honestly, I've never had to 
break yeah, up my shit to, for it to flush. I mean, now you embarrass somebody. I'm and just you're making them cry. Well, I know. They feel like we always had a poop hatchet. Haven't you ever been? <laughs> I can see Lyle wearing his Davy Crockett hat, his little tail in there, fucking whacking up a shit. Hey, uh, so you guys, can, uh, can, I, can I borrow your poop hoe? Yeah. Can I borrow your poop shovel? I don't know and you're why. You're getting because you said in my family, you always used a knife. Well, in my family, we always used a hoe. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to, these are things that you need to discuss before you get married and have children so you can make sure that you guys are pretty much <laughs> in agreement well you are right about uh, me always bringing up fecal and if you go back to some of the archived uh beaver kool-aids even back to 2012 it's for some reason uh shit has kind of been my topic so i i i apologize for that but i'm glad you contributed to the conversation about the uh pretty obvious i just want to say i just want to say one thing about this guy yeah i i feel sorry for him Right for having to go out and and learn that not every family has a poop knife from his <laughs> his weed dealer, because ha- haven't you ever been at a party where one guy comes out and he and he uh, discreetly asks the host of the party, "Hey man, can I use your plunger?" <laughs> you ever been there? You ever been to a party like that? One of my friends comes out and he goes, "Hey, can I use your plunger?" Yeah, fine. That's got to be way more embarrassing than than the "Can I use your plunger?" question because that's already extremely embarrassing to have to walk out and go, Hey man, I need to plunge your toilet, but to go in and go, Hey kid, do you have, can I borrow your poop knife? <laughs> that is beyond. <laughs> I feel really sorry for it. That's all I want to say. Well, the funny thing about it is I said, I never had a, a poop knife in my house. And, but I do remember a yardstick behind the, you know, like when the bathroom door is open, you don't see what's in the corner there. I do recall Tonight, when me and my daughter were having this conversation, that there was a yardstick behind the door. And, and Taylor goes, Dad, me and Ava used to play with that when we were young. We made tents with it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. You, that, that you been, found the poop that knife. That could have been used for you know, measuring an erection. Either way. I think it was a probably a poop no knife. There's no way that that was used for any kind of I, good purpose. I, I, I had, had no idea. I bet my dad had one, man, and I never even knew it till tonight. So. Well, I was just, I was feeling guilty because years ago, uh, the ex wanted a bidet. And I was too cheap, so I stuck a turkey baster and a bucket of water in there. Uh, and I thought that that would be, a, you know, just to get started, because it's like, I don't want to spend all that money on a bidet, and then you won't use it. What? They got those that you can you can kind of just <laughs> install them on your toilet now. You can go to, you can go to like, H-E-B and get one. They look so refreshing, but I just, you know, I I went to Europe once. There was one there. I just didn't really exactly know. I mean, I knew what to do, but I just... I didn't uh, feel like it would be natural to to use one, and maybe so, it's the best thing in the yeah. world. What about the? Well, yeah, I mean, what about Drew was talking about? You know, the uh, the old power seat there that does everything. Yeah. So they don't use them. They don't use like in Brazil. They have you know bidets there because a lot of times you're washing yourself off, and then you're you're kind of dabbing down there with the toilet paper just a little bit, and then you're putting it in the trash. You don't flush it because their septic yeah. systems are not, you know, that great. And so so that's why they use them. I think if we have them over here, it's like, well, it's just like my butt was a little cleaner. I don't know. You know I just I mean? get strange looks every time I go to H-E-B and buying those baby wipes because, you know, I like to have a little extra. Dude, you just need a turkey baster. I'm telling you, a baster, it could yeah. be warm water. And there you go. You just kind of yeah, uh, have a bucket, at it. a bucket. You just put a bucket on the side of the toilet. And if you get carried away, so be it. Yeah. That's the reason why you got a bucket of water in there. But I'm a tech guy, man. I need to have like, you know, something like Drew was <laughs> talking about. Something that's all modern. You know, you just hit a button, flushes your mm-hmm. ass, you're done. See what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. I'm like pulling out the, I'm not even getting the, you know, the, the good baby wipes. I'm getting the H-E-B generics. So they're a little thinner. Usually they tear when you pull them out. So you got to go no, through that hassle. About all this well, this is the shittiest show we've ever done. So we might as oh, well go right, there, you know? Right. So, uh-huh. yeah, they got to come out with a high tech one where you like, when you turn it on, it like texts your mom, text somebody. <laughs> How about Alexa? Wipe my ass. See, you mm-hmm. know, 
All yeah. of a sudden, a little hand comes up there. and I think that hand's trying to get a quarter, Lloyd. I don't <laughs> think it's there to help you out. I think I've seen those before. It's a bank. It's a bank, Lloyd. <laughs> so. that's, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't know what you're going to do with that segment. That's for sure. I don't know what we're going to do with this whole show. But like I said, I think I summed <laughs> it up with this is the shittiest show we've ever done. Um, and that's it. Beaver Kool-Aid, episode 10, shittiest show ever. The chicks don't dig excrement, man. We talked about Aziz on Ray's shitty sex life. (laughs) And we talked about actually taking a shit. This has been a real good one. Look, here's the thing about Beaver Kool-Aid. We say the things that people are thinking but are afraid to say. And so they're going like, you're right, L.A. Lloyd. You're right. That poop knife. That poop knife. That <laughs> your dad's meter well, I stick. Wonder, I just uh, wonder poop. if they have if they have nice nice ones. Like, can you buy a nice poop knife? Can you spend like over a hundred dollars on a poop knife? Yeah, great. It'd be on somebody's. It'd be on like on the wedding gift list. They think, oh, all right. Now there's hardly everything's been bought, and except for the uh, for the really nice poop knife. Of course, my wife. Gonna, you know, she she was saying like. You know, here's what's going to happen with you because you've never done anything with your life. You're going to talk about this fucking poop knife tonight and somebody's going to hear your fucking podcast and they're going to go out and make a fucking million dollars off that fucking poop knife because you don't fucking motivate enough to fucking make your own poop knife. You just talk about the shit and they're going to make a million dollars off of it and fuck you. Go do your fucking podcast. Yeah. Uh, I was looking uh, I was looking on Etsy. <laughs> I was looking on Etsy to see if somebody was selling poop knives. That was the first thing I thought. Of. Well, let's go to an Etsy store. Surely somebody's got some handmade poop knives. Nobody does. Handler handle. <laughs> they got a boat right. handle. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, they've got carved wooden poop knives. Oh my god. <laughs> they also call them doo doo daggers. <laughs> <laughs> this is just Hey, hey. Yeah. And cockock and cockock is <laughs> Look, man, you laugh at that and you didn't laugh at my fecal cleaver. Come on, man. I mean what the hell's Come wrong on, with you? Man. Come on, man. Fecal Cock-cock cleaver's on, good. Man. That is hilarious. <laughs> 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 we should sell a poop knife and call it the beaver cleaver look we've talked about marketing so many things for beaver kool-aid we've tried to do salsa barbecue sauce why not do a fucking poop knife so my wife will be happy she'll you know feel like i'm innovative like i'm trying to make something of myself and we patent the beaver cleaver drew you're a genius again, man. That's not a poop knife. That's a this beaver a cleaver. <laughs> you call that a poop knife? <laughs> you got to get the beaver cleaver from Ronco. You know, we'd have to find somebody who's going to be able yeah. to make uh, some kind of a knife. Find out who makes those letter openers at the Alamo and call those guys up. Or we could just uh, do our own thing and sell that big foam finger. I mean, this is all top of mind for you, Lloyd, since supposedly the president said shithole. And I, and I wanted to know when everybody could openly say and write shithole. When did that happen? I didn't. I never got the memo on that. Like, it's okay to do that everywhere. It was kind of like grab them by the pussy, and people went with that. I went, wh- I never got the memo. When can you say that? Is that okay? Well, you know, I, I I put that post on Facebook. I said, you know, look, here's a guy who's saying shithole. And can I quote the news story since he is the boss of the FCC commissioner? I said, would I get in trouble? And boy, the, you know, the people came in. They were like, yeah, say it. It's your show. Bleh. I'm like, but no, if I said shithole, I'd be fired in two seconds. I guarantee you. Now, the president can say it. You'd be putting them in, in danger of being fined. But when your boss of the FCC commissioner who regulates those seven dirty words says it, and they've got it rolling across the you know, the scroll there on CNN and NBC. Was he on the radio, though? When, I'm not defending the guy. But was he on the radio when he, when he said it? Was he was he broadcasting? No, he That's wasn't broadcasting. That's what I'm saying. It's like you're broadcasting when you say shithole. You know, on the uh, yeah. on a on a terrestrial radio station, and so you would get fined for that. 
Rightfully so, right? But I don't think that because he said it, you know, that you have the right to quote him and violate an FCC rule. It's like that's what you signed up for. Can't say that. It's one of the seven dirty words. John? Shithole? Well, shit, piss, fuck, cunt, you know, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. I mean, those are the, you know, words. No, I was you just can't... curious about that when I saw it everywhere, and I thought, wait a minute, are, are, are your hand's still tied in radio? I haven't been involved in radio in a while. I didn't know. I didn't know if that was okay. You could say whatever now. I suppose technically you could say shithole after 10 p.m. I don't know but why I we're think... talking about FCC rules on a podcast. But but you could. Right. You could you could say shithole after 10 p.m. Couldn't you? That's safe harbor that... for shithole? I believe that's safe, safe harbor. I've heard that, you know, as a PD for a major 100,000-watt radio station, all of a sudden a shithole goes out at 10.01 when my night jog says it, and I get 25, you know, people complaining about it, and one of those happens to send a complaint to the FCC, I'd probably hear about it. You know, that that's just the way that the broadcast terrestrial radio still works in 2018. If someone says shithole and someone complains about it, the FCC is going to do an but knowing how you are, Lloyd, if what's, someone what's did like, call to complain, you would listen to the complaint and then chuckle because they said the word shithole. So you would be like, yeah. Lloyd's like, that's the name of the show. Shithole. Sh- shithole radio. Or maybe that's your superhero name. Shithole. Oh, yeah. uh, he was quoting yeah. Dick Durbin and he was quoting Lindsey Graham, who supposedly we're quoting the president though the president says he didn't say that homeland security secretary says i i didn't i didn't really hear that i don't care the president said shithole it's just what he was you know saying what the shithole was about the countries i just want to i want to see the president like a a parachuting in to port-au-prince and he's got a poop knife in his teeth and he's getting in there and he's getting out of it He's riding a bomb in with a beaver cleaver in his teeth. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys remember you guys remember when George W. Bush flipped off the camera during a presidential address? You remember that? You go and Google that video and you'll see he flips off the camera right there. It's all it was all over like the conspiracy theory videos. You know, they used that quite a bit. What, one world uh, government? And it, that's the same kind of behavior that saying shithole about Haiti is. It really is. It's the same kind of uh, do I don't doing? know if you, I can sandwich those two together, but what are you doing flipping off the camera is what I'm saying, right? What are you doing saying shithole about anybody? And what are you doing flipping off a camera as the president of the United States? My my point is that the decorum or lack thereof uh, has been around not just Donald Trump, but other presidents too. Not Barack Obama, but Bill Clinton certainly, and you know some others. Uh, and 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 more so with Donald Trump. Don't get me wrong. I understand. All of the things that he said, but we have also experienced this in the past. With Bill presidents. Clinton didn't need a poop knife. He did an icing scraper. The whole shithole thing is, look, there's parts of Austin. Last week, we talked about Dirty Six. Dirty Six is a shithole. Okay, if you want to get down to it, it doesn't have, you don't have to go to Haiti or Africa to find a shithole. We got it right here in our backyard. There's shithole places everywhere. It's just our opinion about what a shithole is. But when you're the president of the United States, you can't call Mm -hmm. other countries shithole countries, and we don't want your immigrants coming from there because you're you're living in a shithole place. There's shitholes everywhere. Oh, can we not just? But can we not say that there's parts of India that are total shitholes? I mean. Uh, is that a bad you thing can say to say? It all you want to, but you're not going to say that as the president because right. you know you get quoted on. I mean, but it's but but what I'm saying is is that does everybody not agree that there's a, a a lot of places and places like Bangladesh that are total shitholes? It's insensitive to say shithole, I guess. Mark Cuban and, and has called the Riverwalk a shithole. I mean, you know, he's he talked about it. What a shithole the Riverwalk was many years ago, and got yeah a lot of bad it's, press it's, on it's that. It's just the definition of. It's the definition of a place that's that's uh you know I don't know what do you call it deprecated I don't know what uh, you call it. it's called a shithole I'm not a big Trump fan myself personally but I think Trump would probably if we ever had him on a guest which we never will on Beaver Kool Aid oh my God I'm almost gonna sound like I fucking like Trump and I don't but the conversation we have between the three of us 
I, I think Trump could come on this show and say something like, yeah, yeah, fucking shithole. I know what you're saying there, there, T. Yeah, yeah, the fucking shithole. I get it. There's a lot of places that's a shithole. Look, he doesn't use his sense of judgment because, like I said, if you say one thing, it's going to get quoted across the world. But we all know of plenty of shitholes. Uh, and he just called out Haiti and Africa. So everybody has a shithole, right? You know, everybody Donald Trump is, has a shithole. <laughs> Donald, <laughs> that's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite TV shows from the seventies. Uh. Um. I will go to your party and I will tear it up. Really? Beaver Kool Aid. Get it hard. With Lyle, oh. L.A. Lloyd, and Drew. Make it look a man. So go ahead, stick your head up your ass. <laughs> oh.